Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and today we are talking about CryEngine. Unfortunately, we're not talking about a new release of CryEngine, but we are talking about their future roadmap. They've revealed what is coming up in the next major release, and unfortunately, due to the uh, recent calamity that the world has encountered, obviously things got pushed back and delayed a little bit, but they have announced what their updated roadmap is going to be and what we can expect from the next major version of CryEngine and the ballpark of when that will be. But first, I want to start off with CryEngine itself. Here you can see CryEngine in action. This is the sandbox. Basically, the level editor for CryEngine, and it's um, it's really come a long way. I'm actually really cheering for CryEngine to succeed. Uh, they've really kind of changed their way, the way things work, the way things are handled. Uh, they've taken a much lighter approach, and they are much more developer focused. It's a lot easier to get started. The tools are getting better. It is getting more streamlined and getting more indie friendly. And this is all stuff that needs to happen. Also, Lumberyard, if you're listening, you need to do this stuff as well. So all of a sudden, if you haven't looked at CryEngine in years, it has definitely improved a lot. Now at the same time, so is the competition. Now you've got things like uh, Unity and Unreal Engine, especially with what Unreal Engine has done recently, making the argument awfully difficult, especially because CryEngine and Unreal basically have the same royalty structure. On top of that, you've got open source engines like Godot, uh, making it even more of a a sales job to sell on CryEngine. So we're going to look today at what is coming in the new version uh, in the future, and we're going to decide, you know, maybe if CryEngine is something worth keeping an eye on for you. And there's some really major things that are coming in this next release, uh, especially one of the, and spoiler alert here, uh, we're going to be getting uh, mobile support very soon. And that has been one of the real things that has been holding it back uh, from an indie competitor to the likes of Unity and Unreal Engine. Um, it's moved to a more entity component-based system. It's got C-sharp scripting as as well now where it didn't before. It's got its own visual scripting language, plus you can still develop in traditional C++. All right, so that is CryEngine. You can see it in action here. I believe this was 5.6. I guess I should actually check that. Um, 5.6.5. So this is the most current version, uh, but let's go look at what is new in CryEngine uh, for the roadmap. So they announced their, uh, their update to the roadmap and new things that are coming. The big thing here, again, is mobile and next generation hardware support. Scaleform 4 got update. Scaleform is <laughs> kind of obsolete. So this is another thing they're going to have to look at. Scaleform is a special version of Flash uh, that has been used for AIs and was used in, in several dozens, if not hundreds, of AAA games. Uh, but they've kind of uh, um, been retired, to be honest. Uh, Scaleform doesn't really exist anymore. So CryEngine really does need to create their own UI system at, at some point in time. Uh, we got visual scripting system uh, improvements, uh, so definitely there. Uh, part of the process, we're also uh, undertaking a cleanup and separation of other systems, such as generic reflection and messaging systems, uh, Razor, Chroma, RGB support. Uh, and so on. So what we're going to do is jump over to the actual roadmap itself, and we're specifically going to look at the major next release. So we're looking here, the major next release is going to be early 2021. So 2020 is basically a wash, and I think there might be a bit of a risk there, just because that is just a little too far off, in my humble opinion. This was supposed to be summer of 2020, I think, so that pushback definitely isn't a great thing. Uh, but again, kind of the world we live in right now, a lot of things were delayed quite a bit. So what we got going on here, uh, a lot of the AI stuff is being replaced for the new system. Uh, there's a new uh, improved documentation coming in place, a new cover system, uh, including things like automatic generation, manually adjustable, uh, static and dynamic cover, and variable unit and cover sizes. Attachment system was refactored in their animations, so things like you know applying a sword to a skeleton. Uh, audio control editor improvements, um, implement PCM screening, multiple listener support, Opus file format, uh, support for SDL mixer, and support for Mile sound system all in the audio category at the core. Uh, Cry Common is a library, generic messaging system, generic reflection system, uh, large pack support. Uh, make use of C++ 17 features, Razor Chroma RGB integration, Scaleform, Scaleform 4 update, and the visual scripting uh, integration. This is uh, Schematic is what they call it, and it's being basically being redesigned. They were wondering at some point in time if Schematic was actually being axed, because it kind of seemed like it was. Uh, but no, nope, it's just being refactored. Uh, then on the graphics side of things, and this is where CryEngine has always shined, is in their graphics use. Uh, so DX12 improvements, um, We've got uh, dynamic resolution scaling, uh, which might be kind of like what um, Unreal Engine 5 is talking about, actually. Experimental software ray tracing. Check out my video for um, Neon Noir. It is a demo they did at the last GDC that showed, um, or I think it's GDC before, that showed ray tracing in CryEngine 100% in software on an AMD device. So we're going to have HDR output. 
opaque particles using deferred lighting, optimized dynamic instancing, particle performance improvements, pipeline scheduler, and a Vulkan mobile renderer. Notice that says only for mobile at this point in time, but experimental high-end phone pipeline, experimental mobile VR pipeline, and generic forward mobile, uh, physics improvements, uh, further physics development, but just basically plus plus in that category. And the big thing with this next release is new platform. So next-gen consoles and mobile support. Mobile probably being the biggest one for most indies. And then in the sandbox level, that's their editor that we just saw in action. That is uh, this guy right here, this is Sandbox. Uh, we're getting action command system improvements, FBX importer workflow improvements, uh, general UI improvements or UX improvements across the board, and then per editor undo and redo. So that's kind of where we're looking at with this next version. And then beyond that, they, they talk about a little bit further out, but this is so far out, it almost doesn't matter. But I will link to this article uh, down below. So a, a bit disappointing that this is actually being pushed back uh, basically as far as it is. So we're going to be looking at probably six months or so until this happens, about a six month delay. Uh, hopefully that is the extent of the delay. However, if you want early access to some of this stuff and you wanna, or you're developing say for next generation platforms, they do have a beta sign up available. The beta program, you're gonna see the new platform supported are gonna include Android, iOS, PC, PlayStation, Xbox, and virtual reality. So definitely uh, the number of platforms supported by CryEngine is going to become a bit less of a PC-centric engine like it always has been in the past, and it's going to appeal to more platforms. So that is big, and that is definitely needed. So if you're interested in getting access to that stuff a bit earlier and want to give some feedback, they do have a sign-up going on. Now, the smooth to mobile support isn't really shocking. Uh, this here is um, this is the ARM developer blog. And you see down here, they did this article back in uh, June. So really not that long ago, but last week. Uh, and they're kind of doing talking about some of the performance improvements they've got going on and so on. But they also talked that basically uh, Crytek worked with ARM and Google to port the demo to mobile and utilized ARM Mali GPUs. So that Neon Noir real-time ray tracing I was talking about earlier on, uh, Crytek and ARM and Google worked together to get that actually running on a mobile device. So that's actually kind of cool. Uh, some tools actually came out of that as well. So they've been working directly with ARM uh, to get uh, the best mobile support going forward. Uh, so it's nice to see them working with Crytek. On top of that, they continue to use the Android GPU inspector to optimize their content. So expect further details in the future. So they are directly working with ARM. ARM is the manufacturer behind pretty much all mobile devices these days. Uh, Apple uses a modified version of ARM. Almost all Google's, like the Snapdragon and so on, those are all ARM chips. Uh, and Mali is the GPU from ARM, the high-end GPUs. Uh, so pretty much all the major devices you're seeing out there, things like the S10, the Pixel, the Note, Samsung S20, um, the Razer phone, the um, OnePlus, those are all running on ARM. Uh, so it, that is the right partnership to be having there. So it's a bit of an update. Now, the interesting thing here is that CryEngine was in a little bit of trouble uh, from a financial perspective a little while back. Uh, it seems like they're hiring lately. I haven't heard anything in a number of months now about them not paying developers or anything. So hopefully CryEngine are on good financial footings, and this is a very viable option going forward. I do cheer for them. I like more options. I do like where they're going with CryEngine 5. It's so much nicer to use than it used to be, and I can see so much potential here. So hopefully they keep it going. They get these new features and functionality in there and they are a bona fide competitor to Unity and Unreal Engine. Uh, let me know what you think of CryEngine in general. Let me know if you want right, additional coverage as well. Uh, again, I'm really impressed with where they're going, uh, but again, they've also got more competitors. Like right now, Unigine and uh, CryEngine, they're, they're Oof, hard to pick one right now, but what do you think of this roadmap of what they're advertising and showing here? Do you think it's too little too late? Do you think there's some stuff here that you're really excited to see? Um, they really do have to do something about their UI layer. Uh, scale form, again, uh, is kind of a, a thing of the past, and almost all the other engines that supported scale form in the past have introduced their own UI system. Uh, they need to do that as well. Now, I actually do believe, and what category was that under? Uh, core. I do believe that that is in the future for one of these other things. Let's go into core here. No, they don't have a core here. Oh, there, there it is. Never mind. Uh, I do believe they are ultimately going to be working on their own UI system. That's not listed here. It was something I swore I saw in the past, but it does seem to be one of those things that they are going to have to do at some point in time. Oh, and look, maybe at some point in time we'll support Stadia. Yeah, you won't be supporting Stadia. Stadia will be dead by the time this happens. Oh, sorry. That was guess what's opinion, wasn't it? Anyways, that is kind of where we are looking at right now what is new in um, CryEngine coming up. Unfortunately, again, we do have a bit of delay there, uh, but I'd love to know what you think and have you checked out CryEngine in the last several years? And if so, what are you thinking of it? The nice thing is, again, they've got a nice tight installer. It's 
uh, down to a few gigabytes installed. It's a no-brainer to get it up and running, unlike Lumberyard, for example. So if you haven't checked it out, I do recommend giving it a shot. It is a very interesting project, although the lack of mobile, um, those kind of things definitely do hurt it. So it, it will be um, interesting to see when this release comes, how much of a competitor it actually is. All right, that's it. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.